It's not a decision 2024 as nearly 100,000 Arizona voters woke up today with limited choices on their 2024 ballots. With less than a month before mail-in ballots are scheduled to be sent out, a computer error is to blame. Well, now the state and county officials are working to find a solution to the problem. Secretary of State Adrian Fontes will join us in studio in just a second to talk about the solution to this issue. But 12 News journalist Bram Resnick joins us now with how we got here. Bram? Yeah, Mark, this is confusing and certainly alarming for the 98,000 voters affected. They're all registered voters. The question is, under state law, which ballot can they legally fill out? And right now there is... The voter registration issue goes back 20 years, according to Maricopa County and state elections officials. That's when Arizona began requiring proof of citizenship in order to vote in state and local elections. But a computer coding problem resulted in 98,000 longtime voters being marked as eligible for the state and local ballot, even though they had not provided proof of citizenship. Without that proof, those longtime voters could vote the federal ballot only for president, the Senate, and Congress. According to the Secretary of State, affected voters are ages 45 to 60. The largest slice, 37 percent, are Republicans. They were issued driver's licenses before October 1996 or obtained a duplicate, and they registered to vote after January 2004. We are going to keep the public informed. We're going to let you know what is happening. And we're going to try to reach a resolution that it is, is as fair as possible to Arizona's voters. The Arizona Supreme Court has now taken up the case. The justices were given two options. Let the 98,000 voters vote the full ballot or limit them to the federal only ballot. And if you're wondering about the potential political impact, in a worst case scenario, all of the 98,000 voters or so would still be able to cast a ballot in the major races, like president. You'll recall Joe Biden won Arizona in 2020 by just 11,000 votes. Mark? So 98,000 is a big number for that. Bram, thanks. Adrian Fontes is with us now. You've known about this. And by the way, you've had a day, my friend. So I appreciate you're coming down tonight. But you've known about this since September 7th. You've always talked about transparency yep. with the voters. Why are we just hearing about this now? Well, first, thanks for having me. And second, we've got to make sure that we've got the facts straight. And the interesting thing is one of the first sets of analysis between our department and the Motor Vehicle Division uh, gave us a number of 144,000. We eventually dug deeper and ran more traps, and it came down to 98,000. It may still come down further. But at this moment in time, we wanted to make sure that county election officials across all of Arizona and Arizonans knew that while we have identified an issue, we are working on a solution right now. And that's why this lawsuit was filed. Where does the blame lie, do you think? Is it the computer glitch or is it our, our complicated and demanding proof of citizen voting system? Yes to both. Uh, oh, yeah. This is a complicated system. Uh, a lot of people talk about that. Arizona has so many different ways of doing things. Uh, and, and oh, by the way, Arizona is the only state that requires actual documented proof of citizenship to vote in more than just the federal races. Every other state in the union require exactly the same thing as our Fed only's require, which is uh, signing an affidavit under penalty of perjury that you are a U.S. citizen. Uh, so we've got a system here uh, that was created a long time ago. There was a logic trap in there that wasn't previously identified. But it's also the case that we've never been fully funded in the Department of State. Neither has the Motor Vehicle Division or many other of Arizona's governmental systems. And I think this is a really big problem that we've faced a lot. We expect perfection, but we're only paying for something much less than that. Can I just say something? Every, and, and, and I think this almost every time we're covering the elections on the desk. Why does everything seem to be so hard here? Well, it's not hard. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look at the vast majority uh, of our elections over the last several decades, we do really, really well. Our voters have many more ways of voting uh, than most voters in the rest of the country. Uh, our elections are run about as well as anybody else's in the country. But we've, over the last several cycles, become the eye of the storm because of a variety of controversies based mostly in conspiracy theories. Those took hold here more than anybody else. And, you know, there were certain actions by former legislators bringing in outside parties to overly scrutinize. By the way, every court case has shown that we do our elections really, really well, and none of the allegations have ever stuck. 
This, however, is another case where really good elections officials and partners in the governor's office, the attorney general's office, the county attorney's office, and folks all over the place have gotten together to try to figure out a problem uh, and, and, and fix this thing. Importantly, we're bringing this forward now, and we are still working on other ways to make this list even smaller and fix it quicker. Respectfully, I smell lawsuits coming, especially if a state or a local politician loses. What's to stop them from saying, I lost because of a flawed system? Well, I'll tell you what, the system has been the way it is. And for the last 20 years, uh, we've seen what we've seen in these in this particular set of voters. But look, in 2016, I won an election. In 2020, I lost an election. We have this policy of finality in Arizona's elections. And moving forward is what we need to do. And that includes some of the other things we're working with. This list is going to become smaller real soon. We're working with vital records to cross-check it against Arizona birth certificate databases. Hopefully we can reduce that list significantly. Congressman Greg Stanton has actually agreed to help us with the U.S. Passport Office to see if we can further reduce the number of folks who have already proven uh, that they have a passport and that means that they are citizens uh, under the right circumstances. So we're doing everything we can to whittle this down as quickly as possible. Hopefully the Supreme Court will get us a ruling soon. I want to get this in before we're out of time. Almost 100,000 Arizona voters in limbo tonight. What do they need to know? Well, what they need to know is we're working hard to reduce this list as much as possible. And when we do get to the point where we are ready to contact voters and let them know that they may need to provide more information, we will let them know. But if the Arizona Supreme Court does what I am asking them to do, and many people across politics are asking them to do the same thing, we will not have to do any changes until after this election. So folks who've been voting a full ballot for, in some cases, decades, will continue to be able to vote the way they have if we are successful. That's what we're hoping for, a quick resolution. Adrian Fontes, it's been a long day for you. I appreciate your coming down tonight. Thanks for having me. Good Mark. to see you. Appreciate it.